Welcome to Cover Design Studio. In this video, we walk you through downloading GIMP and using it to design your Kindle cover. You'll also learn how to prepare the files for submission to the Amazon digital platform. To design your cover, you'll need three things. A design file from CoverDesignStudio.com, your manuscript's copyright page, and GIMP, which you can download at CNET.com, or you can go to CoverDesignStudio.com and click on the Instructions tab and then click the red button. Once you're at CNET, click download to safely download GIMP. And then when you get this window popping up, click save file. Now it's gonna save to your computer, which can actually take a minute or two and you might have a little timer like I do up here in the upper corner that shows how long it's gonna take. So we'll just wait while that saves uh, to our computer. Okay, once it's saved, click on the file and click Run. And then click Yes. Choose your language and click OK. And then click Install. When it says finish, click finish. And then you'll need to go open it up and find it on your computer. It should say GIMP, mine says GIMP2. Next, go to File Open and locate the file you downloaded from our website. Once you get to the right folder, there'll actually just be two different files inside. One is a .tiff and one is a .xcf, and that's the one that you'll wanna open. So what you should see here is on the left, the tools, and on the right, you should see this layers panel. If you don't see those, you can go to Window Dockable Dialogs and click Tool Options and Layers or Toolbox under the Dialogs. If this ruler is not in inches, it's in pixels, go down to the lower corner here and you can toggle, you can see between inches and pixels. Select inches and you can change that. Now, some of you may also see a line running down the center. That's just a guide. If that's a nuisance to you, you can just go to view and where it says show guides, unclick that and you won't see it. Before we go any further, let's do a file save as so that we can change the name of this file to our own book. So I'm gonna leave the word Kindle on here and change the rest of what's in this title to the name of my book, which is the Star Namer. So it'll say the star name or Kindle. And that's so that we always have a working copy and a copy of the original file in case we need to go back to it. So you can hit save. Over on the right here is our layers panel where each different item corresponds to a text element on the actual page. We can click it and see what it corresponds to. So before we get started, look for the one that says copyright notice and click on it and locate it on your cover. It can be sometimes kind of hard to find. Mine's buried here in this green section. Next, go to the toolbox on the left and select the capital A. That's the text tool. Copyright notice. Copy and paste into your book's copyright page. Quote original and modified cover art by artist name and coverdesignstudio.com, end quote. So click inside here and highlight what's in between the quotations. And then you'll go right click to copy that, or you can go edit copy. And you need to open up your book's manuscript and go to the copyright page so we can paste this in. Go edit paste. And I like to make sure that the text that I've just pasted in is in the same typeface and point size as the rest of my copyright page. Once that's done, you've satisfied your copyright requirement, you can hit save and close. Now, because we don't wanna see this copyright notice on our final outcome, you can go up to that layer and just click on the eye and it'll disappear it from the cover. Okay, now we can start changing the text and customizing it uh, for your cover. So. 
Find the layer that corresponds with the book title. We'll start there. Be sure to click on the capital A text tool. And you can see we have two different layers here because we have two different sizes of text. This book is going to be called the Star Namer, so I'm going to leave the first word in place and change the other two. If I didn't need that first word, I could delete it, or if I wanted to change it to something else, I would do it in the same way. So let's start at the top and just work our way down wherever it takes us. It looks like this first one corresponds with the author name. I'm Stacy Vanderpoel, so I'll type that in. The next one corresponds here. We'll call this the definitive guide. The next one, we're back down here. This is information about the author. So I will say I'm a night sky gazer and star naming expert. The next is the copyright notice, which we've taken care of. The next one is a area where you can put a blurb or a description of the book or an endorsement or a quote uh, from the book or about the book. I don't have that, so I'll just put um, some description information. Everything you need to know about naming your own stars, including a list of recommended organizations. You get the idea. Okay, the next layer corresponds with the subtitle or more descriptive text. If you don't have a subtitle or if your subtitle is far too long for your design, you can just put a tagline kind of like this or a little bit more description. Okay, the next layers we've already done. The last one here is this starburst, which a lot of our covers don't have, but a few do. So we're going to show you how to handle it in GIMP. This is where you can put an award that the book has won or been nominated for or something else if that doesn't exist. I'm going to put the most complete resource on the topic. And I like to rotate this text to make it look a little bit more like a sticker. So I'll go to the rotate tool here and click inside and I can use this slider to rotate it left or right. I want to rotate it this direction so your eye kind of lands on the title. And once you hit rotate, the text can no longer be edited, so make sure you've spell checked it thoroughly before you do it. Looking at the sticker, I can see that it's not quite centered, so what I'm going to do is click on that text layer and select the Move tool. I also want to make sure down below that I have Move the Active Layer checked. And then I can move the text around inside that starburst and get it a little better centered. And that's the way you can actually move any of these elements around. They're all fully customizable. You just select it and then use the Move tool. So that was easy enough, but let's say that for some reason this cover didn't work for you. For example, let's say that your name, the author name, was longer than was really meant for this cover design. Let's say that my name was Jonathan Lee Vanderpaul, Lee H. Vanderpaul. So when we take a look at it, you can see that the name is sort of pushing out to the edges and the margins. It's taking up more space on the page than, we sh than it should. So to correct this, what you can do is select that layer, and with the text tool selected, go down here to the letter spacing. And you can see that it's set at zero, but I can actually change this as long as I have the words highlighted. So I'll go over using my text tool and highlight the words that I want to reduce the letter spacing. And then I'll just reduce that number and you can see the letters become closer together. They don't change in size, they just become closer together so that they fit better on the page. And you can do this with any of the text, uh, especially if you have a title that's a little bit longer than was meant for your cover design. Just highlight those letters and you can make them closer together or farther apart. As a last resort, you can actually change the size of the text, but we don't recommend that. I'm going to go up here and go Edit Undo to put the title back where I like it. And you can go Edit Undo anytime you want to take a step back on something that you've done. So once you have this customized and proofread, you're going to go ahead and save your work. And then you're going to want to go File, Save As. And we're going to make a new file that uses embedded fonts. So I'll just add the word embed to the end of, of the name of my book here. 
Then to embed those, I'll go to Image, Flatten Image. And you can see in our Layers panel, it's all now been reduced down to a single image with all the fonts embedded. So I'll go File, Save. Next, we're going to go to Image, Scale Image, and in the top where it says Image Size, Width, and Height, make sure that's shown in pixels, and make sure that the little chain link is linked. And what we need to do is change uh, the pixel size so that it works with the Kindle requirement at this time. So we'll change the height on the pixels to, say, 2000, and that should change the width to 1325, and then hit Scale. And next we'll go File, Export, and we'll change the extension here. It says .png. We'll change that to say JPG for JPEG. And down here we'll select JPEG as well and click Export. And this is the JPEG that you'll be able to submit to the Amazon Kindle platform. So we want the highest quality and click Export again. And now you have a finished cover design.